on cornerofthegalaxy.com. It's time for another episode of Corner of the Galaxy from the Box, the show that gets you behind the scenes of the LA Galaxy and into the minds of soccer reporters and MLS experts. Your hosts for the day are Corner of the Galaxy's Josh Gessman and LA Times soccer reporter Kevin Baxter. Let's start the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy from the box on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on a Monday, January 16th, the LA Galaxy, just uh, actually, I think, like 11 days away from their very first preseason game. We're going to talk about that game. We're not going to talk about that game. We're going to talk about the lead up to that game. Uh, But there's big news surrounding the LA Galaxy. Obviously, a boycott called by the supporters groups. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about that. Give you some of our views and opinions. And I know we have more of that coming up on Thursday night as well. So a long week of that coming ahead. We'll tell you all the stuff we understand. Plus, Greg Vanny and some players had their very first media availability on Friday. We want to talk about that as well. To help me do all of that, he's back. He's the man who actually broke the news on Chris Klein's contract extension. It's the panda himself, Mr. Kevin Baxter. Kev, how's it going, buddy? Hey, I think we're going to talk a lot about that. Not a little bit. No, just a little bit. (laughs) Before we get into that, is Michael Araujo's introduction just the absolute best introduction in all of podcasting? So last time you got texted immediately after criticizing and trying to get Michael Rajo fired from his announcing gig that he has on this show. No, he is the best. Yeah, I, I know. I know. I know that. I'm, I'm worried. I'm wondering if you know that. Do you do you know that? That's the that's the same voice that introduces Mike Trout at Angel Stadium. It is. And Shohei Otani. It is. As a matter of fact, yes. Yes. Mike, Mike, has, Mike does a great job. I, I love him. I always have a great time. And he's... I don't know if I, maybe this is too much behind the scenes, but he's generally a very nice guy, except whenever you tick him off and he immediately texts both of us while we're still like the, 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 still tape, on the, air. the tape is still warm from it being recorded, although we don't use tape, but you know what I mean? All that fun no, stuff. Not really. Not really. Um, you were, you were on our Thursday show as well. Cause you got I to was. call in for I, a little, little like, breaking news. Yep. First time, first time. <laughs> yeah. First I time, had, long I had time. A, I had a take. I had a take, a good take. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I uh, I um, got word from the galaxy after weeks of insistent questioning. They told me that Chris Klein is now still the president of the LA Galaxy, meaning that he got an extension because his contract, uh, according to Chris, told me he he told me his contract ran out December thirty first, and if right. he is still president, that means he got an extension or he's working for free, one or the other. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I'm sure he's working for free. I'm sure he's working for. Free. We're going to talk a lot about that. Um, and that's that's you coming saw up. him. All, you, you, you there was a sighting. There was. Yeah, I saw he's at the stadium. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's a that's news or not. I, it feels like it should be news that Chris Klein, who is supposed to be suspended. And we went back and read the suspension. It's suspended from soccer operations. So, right, so he could be there you know, looking at the grass and, and maybe, you know, dusting his office desk or he could be doing a lot of things. But as you pointed out, then who's policing him? What if he wanders into a meeting where they're talking about soccer and like, he says, ah, don't hide, don't don't. Don't get that messy guy in a transfer and then walks out. Right. Who's who's policing that? Uh, and apparently no, and nobody. The answer is nobody is, and that's MLS. It's all window dressing. It's it's all appearance. There is, it, you know, it, it took two years for them, two and a half years, right, for them to even find out about this. Yeah. And it took almost as long for the Inter Miami thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it was. I I will say, Chris was on the upper concourse, uh, so he was basically directly above the the Team LA store whenever I saw him. Um, so I, I didn't get to say hi. He was over there and I was down here. Uh, so I walked in there, but he's there. He's at the stadium. I mean, as you said, like if you're, if does it, whenever he walks down the hallway, if Greg Vanny comes down the other way, does he have to like turn around and walk back the other way? Like, 
I mean, come on. Sergeant Schultz is the compliance officer for MLS. You know, <laughs> I, you know, I know nothing. I see nothing until it hits them in the face. It doesn't exist. And then when it hits them in the face and they can't ignore it, then they have to address it. But um, uh, address I, I, it, I, address it in quotes. They, I mean, yes. you know, not to not to make you sound belittle because obviously what you did was harass them until basically they gave you an answer and there was a whole bunch. Well, of I don't know if I harassed. Them. Oh, you I were harassing. Them you were harassing. You were calling them day and night. You were you were breathing breathing heavily into the phone. I know how it works. I know your your techniques. Um, uh, but, 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 but then they use you basically, you know, and they're like, they're like, okay, well, here's the announcement. But as people have pointed out, the LA Galaxy, nobody put their name next to that. We, nobody we don't know who said next, it. No, we, no. I, and, and I quoted the, the thing basically verbatim in, in total. It was two sentences. Uh, Dan Beckerman's name wasn't anywhere near it. It didn't say that he's, what it said is he is still, pre, he remains president of the Galaxy, I think is the wording. Right. Um, they didn't say he'd been signed to an extension, they didn't say how long. Um, they didn't give any other details other than to say that he's still president. Now, uh, the same week, by the way, just for context, LAFC re-signed both of it. They have co-presidents, Larry Friedman and John Thornton. They re-signed both of those guys to contract extension and sent a release out with quotes um, signed by the team. Um, it, it, Galaxy did none of that. Um, and they waited several weeks to, to tell me. I started questioning them when I was still in Qatar at the World Cup, December 9th, I think, was the longest conversation we had. Um, and they waited until Greg Vanny got on the phone um, to talk to me about how Chris Klein would not be involved in any of the sporting decisions. But, A, we've heard that before. Right. And, B, what does that mean? I mean, like and you said, if, he, if, if they come to him, if they say, you're the business guy, Chris, you're the business guy, oh, hey, we want to sign Kevin Cabral again for $2 million. Do we have that? Well, that's a sporting decision, isn't it? Well, I mean, and that was one of the things Greg Vanny even said. We're going to talk a bunch about what Vanny said in his Friday press conference. I'm telling you right now, after you're done with this podcast, you need to go watch the full press conference with Greg Vanny because there are so many news nuggets I know I'm not going to be able to get to. I have like 37 points here that we could go over about things that Greg Vanny said. He he talked to us, I think, for like 39 minutes, right? So there were about eight, ten, eight to 10 reporters there um, asking questions. Scott French asked 700 questions. Um, it, was, it was really bad being the guy who was after Scott French. I kept reaching for the microphone, and Scott just kept kept going every time. I think I got a couple chuckles out of Vanny. Like I went over with my two fingers to grab it from him, and Scott like is like, "Like I got two more. I got two more." And then he would go, and then he's like, "I have two more." It was a lot of fun. It's I see that's one of the things I miss this whole time is Scott French asking endless questions. Good questions, by the way. There's never a it's it's never a thing with Scott where it's like they're useless questions. They're good questions. It's just like everybody else usually asks two or three. Um, and so it's, it's one of those, it can go, it can go around. He can share a little bit. Uh, you know, it's one of those. It's, yeah. It sometimes becomes sort of a one-on-one -on -one interview <laughs> and you're just like, uh, should I be here right now? Do I, yeah. do I need to be here right now? It's, it's just funny. I always think that there's always just, it's, it's like nothing changed, right? Like it, we do this year after year, Kevin, and there's an off season and we were people, you know, I, I think Mike Gray, uh, who's in our chat room right now, but he's saying, D did we have an off season? I'm like, we never have an off season. Like it never fully comes about. We really hadn't seen each other. The reporters in that room hadn't seen each other since basically the end of the season. Cause I haven't run across Scott or Damien or, or Mike or Alex or, um, or Gio or any of the other people who were there. I don't run across them I'm in my normal every day to day stuff. So I haven't seen them for a couple months. And so it's just weird that like you get back and it's like, nothing has changed. Uh, did you miss them? Did you miss them all? I did. I, I always miss people. I like seeing I like seeing the people from the Galaxy, people in PR, Vicky and Kevin. I like seeing the people who do the video stuff. I like I, like that's those Barbara. those are people I have grown up around for for a very long time. Whenever you think about it, I mean, this is my 15th season covering the LA Galaxy. I've spent a lot of time in that building over the last, you know, 14, 15 seasons. So it's nice to go back and it's nice to see it. And it's nice to see that things don't change. Then you talk about things that are going to change. Um, we were talking about, you know, um, just how with Apple TV demanding that postgame press conferences are, are published and basically streamed to Apple TV, right? How does that work whenever the away coach is going to be part of that as well? There's only one TV studio, Kevin. So how do you make that work? Because whenever you, usually whenever you go to a game and you cover it, you usually talk to the home team, right? I mean, that's me. I'm usually there to talk to the home team unless I travel. Yeah. And, and if you're traveling, then you go to the locker room. And right. I mean, I guess they're going to film it with the with an iPhone outside has yeah. to be an iPhone. Can't be another be, phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> has to be Apple. 
exactly. So, I mean, but like that type of thing. So are you going to bring the the visiting coach in to sit there and take questions from people who aren't there? But then you're probably going to have to give them a Zoom feed because then they're going to Zoom in the questions. And like, that means we're going to be on our voices, at least they're going to be on Apple, Apple TV, TV, right? Just like Ted Lasso. Questions. Just like Ted Lasso. Questions. Yeah. Scott's French is going to be a star. He's going to get more airtime <laughs> than most coaches. <laughs> oh, I love Scott so much. I miss him. Already. I only saw him on Friday. I already miss him. Uh, anyway, so there's going to be stuff that we're going to talk about there as well. So a lot of little things that are that are sort of coming up um, and, and things we want to talk to. So let's get uh, a little bit to it. Um, just in terms of timing and everything else that's going on, 11 days until the LA Galaxy's very first behind closed door preseason game uh, coming up on January 27th. Uh, so 11 days and counting for that. Galaxy roster not complete. Very interesting, though. And 40 days right now until the LA Galaxy kickoff against LAFC and what could be an empty stadium from the LA Galaxy fans' point of view. Um, some really you know interesting who else stuff. Going to be an Apple TV star, Sophie. So, yep, Sophie will be best, always ask the best questions. Yep, the the most off the wall best questions. I never know where yeah. she's going with it, and they always end up being they amazing. Always land, they always land like really. High. It's always the best question, and and the accent, of course. People will go, oh, it's they, a British they, accent. She knows what she's talking about. No, I, I've heard the accent is fake. Uh, if you've ever tuned really? in on a Thursday night, you'll know very good that that Sophie's accent is totally fake. It's uh it's all an act. So, um, yeah, that's what we got. So, um, that's the countdown that's coming. Now, the LA Galaxy this weekend, as I think everybody knows, we're at the or in Pasadena near the Rose Bowl. I was gonna say at the Rose Bowl, but they were like in the surrounding area around the Rose Bowl. There's some there's a large hill there that the LA Galaxy have trained on over the years, and that includes whenever Greg Vanny was there and all sorts of stuff. So there were pictures and videos from the LA Galaxy running up and down that hill. Jonathan Bond talked to us a little bit about it. He says, uh, first of all, Galaxy training twice a day, or were training twice a day, training in the morning, training in the afternoon. Uh, we talked to them on a Friday. They knew they were going to be out there on Saturday doing the same thing. And I don't know if anybody remembers what it was like on Saturday, at least down here in in, in SoCal, in, in Orange County area, I should say. Um, but it was pouring really, really, really hard. So I wonder if those guys got hit by the rain going sideways and all that fun stuff while they were up there running up and down the hills. Apparently they do it six times. Jonathan Bond says it doesn't sound like that much. Um, and then uh, and then he said, but trust me, it really is. And I mean, we're a whole bunch of out of shape reporters. I don't think any of us, anybody would want to see any of us try to run up that hill once or twice. So um, yeah, very, very interesting sort of thing uh, going on with that. So they did that. Uh, the other news that sort of came out of that news in quotation marks, the other news that sort of came into that was that Dayon Jovalich had a number change. He was number 99. If you'll remember last season, I always liked that number 99, little Wayne Gretzky, uh, you know, the era there. And, so. and, and Manny Ramirez. See, I mean, no, no, or, or wasn't he asking who had 99? You know, he had 66. Was, yeah. I, I couldn't tell you. I, I wouldn't follow it that much, but uh, uh, he now is, goes to number nine with Kevin Cabral. No longer here. I saw a video today of Kevin Cabral training with the Colorado Rapids, all smiling, having a good time. So uh, the fans that, seem to love him already. He's a, in Colorado seem he's to, a seem nice to really guy. Him. He's he a is. nice guy until he starts going on seven breakaways a game and converting none of them. They're going to like him. Um, I think he might be different at altitude. Maybe the shot will, you know, go in. It doesn't have as much English. That was the problem. Yeah. He, he bent it too much. Yeah, uh, he's not a he's not a sea level player. He's an altitude player. Can you imagine though, like with all the running that he did as an LA Galaxy player, taking him up to altitude and how tired he can make people <laughs> be? I mean, there's there's not it's not a huge sort of stretch to think that he could absolutely make defenses like you know end up grabbing their knees and like hurling. Uh, at altitude whenever he's playing against them. So yeah, that's why you run up and down the hill six times. So day day on now is half the man he used to be. Yes, he is. He one. is num uh, number nine. But let me ask you, if if Kevin Cabral scores 15 goals this mm -hmm. season for Colorado, mm -hmm. still a good trade for the Galaxy or a bad trade? Depends on who the Galaxy get, right? I mean, doesn't that doesn't that matter? If the guy the Galaxy gets scores 15 goals, then you know, you're like, okay, that makes sense. Or if the guy, the Galaxy get fits right into everything they do, you get the offense that you were hoping out of the winger position. Greg Vanny made it the point of talking about the winger position and getting more could, offense. Could be, down, could be down two wingers. Could be down two wingers. Could be down three wingers when you really think about it. There's a lot. I mean, because you're down Kevin Cabral, that's one winger. We know that Samuel Grand Serum, we'll talk about that here in a second, down another winger. And then Douglas Costa, down another winger. There's a, So it's got to be a dragonfly. It's the only one that has four wings. <laughs> is that it? So Yeah. 
Um, so that's that's something to certainly pay attention to and all that. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff sort of uh, going on there. But let's get to uh, let's get to what Greg Vanny sort of talked about. Now, Kevin, you talked to Greg on Thursday night, but just before we started our podcast on Thursday night, Sophie and I, you were talking to Greg Vanny, and then you got done, hopped on with us, and I know you shared some of that stuff. So we're gonna go down some points and. You can sort of add in what you heard from Greg whenever he talked to you, and then we can talk about a little bit yeah. about that. The most interesting thing we were talking about before we started this was how apparently things changed in the 12 hours before between when I talked to Greg and when you guys did, because he told me, and I have the quotes right here, he told me that that Costa and Grant Sear were both coming into camp. He expected Grant Sear the next day, meaning Friday, expected Costa over the weekend. Um, he knew that, that they had been talking to other clubs, and... Um, he talked a lot about rumor. He said a lot of rumors are out there. Some of them are going to happen. Some of them aren't. There's, there's, you know, there's a little smoke with some of them. There's nothing there with others. Um, and he talked, talked about how he actually liked that. You know, he, he was talking about, look, if no one's interested in your players, you don't have a very good team. Right. But if you have a good team, then, then, uh, you know, people are interested in your players. And he said, this off season was the one when he got the most calls and most queries about players, even when he was with Toronto. He said this was the one. But again, he said Grant Sear is coming. He has a per he had a personal in past tense. He had a personal thing to deal with. It's all worked through. He should be here tomorrow. Right. Meaning Friday. Yep. And then he told you guys, hey, I don't think Grant Sear is coming back. He, he said Sam Grant Sear has some personal issues that have arisen in the last week or so. He, 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 he made it very clear. He'll either work those things out and he'll be back with the L.A. Galaxy or he's going to stay in France because whatever the issue is, staying in France is perhaps a solution to that issue. It sounded like um, it was very interesting because he said this about Douglas Costa and he said this about Sam Grinser and he was very adamant whenever he said it. He said, we all want players who want to be here. And it wasn't that Sam it, and with Grand Sir, it's different than Costa with Grand Sir. He said. I think Sam would want to be here as long as those personal issues are, are taken care of. But it was more like he needs to be focused on us here in L.A. And so he can't have something that is drawing his focus back to France, whatever that is. And I immediately thought of like Yella Van Damme whenever he was playing. And obviously he was going through a whole bunch of stuff where he was away from his kids and he had an ex-wife. And maybe they were trying to reconcile. Maybe they weren't. Um, and so it was this whole big thing and eventually it ended up causing him basically one to really tank in his second season with the LA galaxy, uh, and two made him look like he was going to give up in some of those games. Because there were a couple games he got red cards where it was very clear. He didn't want to be on the field and he just wanted to get out of there and, and three it ended up, you know, that he had to leave. Um, so all of those things sort of happened very rapidly, very quickly. And it's all because of personal issues that were keeping his attention outside of where he was because we saw him in his first season with the LA Galaxy and he was a monster. Uh, he was great. You could see him focused, all those things. So that's what I think they're trying to avoid with Sam Grantier. And it's interesting that Vanny says, you know, we want players who want to be here because with Douglas Costa, I asked about Douglas Costa. I said, you know, and and sort of to back up what you were saying, Kevin, I said with Douglas, I go, you know, I don't know whether the rumors are true or not, but it seems that he had meetings down in Brazil and was talking to other teams. Did he do that with the knowledge of the of the club? And Vanny said, yeah, you know, he said Douglas is coming. He had to get a new passport because his passport expired. So he had to get a new passport and then he was waiting for the visa. to. So they got the new passport and then the visa was coming. And while he was doing all that, we knew about all the conversations that he was having with those other teams. So it wasn't surprising. And then he went on to say, if Douglas Costa doesn't want to be here, then Douglas Costa doesn't have to be here. Like he has to decide. Well, a couple of things. It always bothers me in, in every sport. Baseball probably is as it's as common as with soccer. He's been the off season is two months now, and now he just looked at the passport and goes, "Oh, holy cow! Look at that! It's expired. I better go get a new one." He knew two months ago. Why does it come down to the last week? And, and it, this this is a very common thing. And then when, when the was the last just, time you got a passport? Do you get a passport in two weeks? Do the LA well, Times know, pull pull no, pull strings? No, I know that, but 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 here's the deal. I know when my passport runs right. out, and I know I'm not going to wait until the last week. Right. Um, and let's face it, the Galaxy and or a million dollar soccer player who played for the Brazilian national team can probably get an immigration attorney to help him. But the other part of that is just want to remind everybody, um, Vanny did not want Costa. I don't know where the push for Costa came from, whether it came from inside the building or whether it was something from AEG. We've known that AEG has done this in the past. They did it with Gerard. They did it with 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 uh, with Gio. Um, 
you know, it just looks like a the guy was available. Um, Vanny wanted Pavone. That was never going to happen. And I think management forced cost on him. And now we're in a situation where, you know, the team got a, a, a season out of him. He really didn't apply himself until the end of the season. Didn't have the kind of season they expected him to have. Cost him a designated player spot. And now they're in a situation where if they don't do something with that designated player spot one way or the other, by – May they lose it because they can't do anything with it this summer because of the suspension. And so, in a sense, management really screwed this one up. If, if in fact, all the things that that we've been told are true, which is mainly Vanny did not want him, and now he's had to clean up this mess. Yeah, it very well could be. And so, um, you know, it, it, Greg made it the point to say he had a much better second half of the season than he did a first half of the season, and he which said is true, which is true. Although I would say he had a much better like last twelve games of the season. <laughs> I don't know if it was a whole half, right? But um, certainly you understand the whole entire Galaxy organization had great last, you know, 10 to 12 games. So, you know, you can sort of take that as you will as well. The interesting thing about Costa is it's more of a a decision that Costa has to make, right? And and Sam Sam is a di- in a different situation. This isn't the same. And I think Greg was like, Sam wants to be back, but if his focus can't be here, then we need to do something that's best for him and however that works with Costa. So... Greg told me all of that and he talked about Costa. He did the whole thing. And so it sounded like there was some uncertainty with Costa then, right? Like whether he wants to be back, whether he's going to be back, the whole deal. And so I asked sort of not point blank, but I asked a question that I knew would get an answer, even if it's not a complete answer. And I asked, is there any sort of indecision on your part or is there any uncertainty on your part about whether Douglas Costa will be here for the start of the season? Right. And Greg says there is no uncertainty. Which means he's either staying or going, and Greg knows which one that is, right? Like he, Greg, there is no uncertainty. I know what Douglas Costa is going to be doing, which could indicate that Greg didn't want to talk about a buyout because I think there's a possibility that the LA Galaxy buy out Douglas Costa, um, or it could mean that they basically are still working on a deal to move him, and he knows he's not going to be here, and or it means he knows he's absolutely 100 percent going to be back. Um, so, well, has there been a sighting of either Grant Sierra or Costa? Because again, Greg told me yet. on Thursday that Friday that these guys would at least one of them would be here and the other would be here over the weekend. The other part of that is if Costa doesn't want to be here, why did the Galaxy have to buy him out? I mean, Gareth Bale decided he wasn't coming back, and you know, Gareth Bale just walked, and and LAFC gets the money back. If Costa's the one who doesn't want to be here, uh, and, and why do the, does the Galaxy have to buy him out? It would seem to me that if he doesn't want to be here, then he breaks the contract and the Galaxy owe him no money at all. Yeah, but I mean, Douglas Costa is not an idiot, right? So he's probably going to show up and get his money, right? So he'll be here. He'll show up. He'll do his stuff. And they'll be like, what? You know, they'll they'll figure that out. I don't know what the answer is there. I'm just telling you that Greg seems to know what the answer is. He, I did, wouldn't expect him to tell us. And he talked about going after DPs and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And he said, you guys will see our plan basically in the next month we'll unveil that right as it sort of comes about and he said that they're really thinking about two to three big two to three significant moves that he sees um which is an interesting number but but probably the correct number whenever you realize who they've moved already and who they're expecting back um so i thought that was that was sort of interesting he did absolutely 100 percent kill the christian pavone rumor it was he said he said you know sometimes where there's uh, where there's where there's smoke, uh, there is no fire. He goes and there is no fire with Christian Pavone, right? Like so, he, that's he, not happening. He also killed the twin striker th- thing with whether Jovic and, and Chicharito would play together. He does not like the four four two. He wants a lone striker. He so so that's so that's what I got as well, right? I was like, oh, he said no, and then I went back and listened to it, and he does say no. He and he was joking around. Scott French asked him the question. He was joking around too. He goes, you know, I ended last season talking about this. Might as well start twenty twenty three by answering this question. And so we were sort of going over all the all the stuff there. And he goes, he goes, I don't like a four four two, a standard four four two. He goes, I don't think it creates the overloads. You know, he goes, I don't, I, I don't think it, it creates the gaps and the matchups that we like to do. He goes, so I don't see them. He goes, especially whenever you have two number nines. He goes, that's not like you have a number nine and a half and a nine. He goes, you don't have a Robbie Keane and a Landon Donovan. Those are different number nines. Like those are different guys that you can do it. He goes, but for these guys, they, they play very similarly. He goes, there are some ways for us to get them on the field together. And we have to figure out what that is. And he said, I understand that whenever you have a guy who scores 18 goals and a guy who scores 14 goals and roughly, he was saying roughly, right? Roughly 18, roughly 14 goals that you want to figure out how to get them on the field together. And then everybody wants that. He goes, but we need to be smart about how we do that so but right now he does he may not have an option if he doesn't have enough wingers to make his 
ideal lineup work. And right now he doesn't have Cabral. He doesn't have, may not have Grant Sear and, and may not have Costa. So who's going to play those positions? I mean, this is where the, there, and I would say that Greg Vanny was asked about the sanctions, right? In terms of how that would affect his decision making. And he says, you know, the first thing we have to do is really get out in front of it. Um, and he goes, and under, we have to understand that all the plans we may have had for the summer have to be pushed up now because we have to make decisions now. But what they don't need is uncertainty. And so when you have Grand Sur, which would be a piece maybe they weren't planning on having to, and it seems like this is a recent thing, that they weren't planning on having to replace. If you have a piece like that, you're going to have to replace all of a sudden. Well, you better have the system in place to be able to go and grab those guys and do them quickly. Um, I, 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 I bet you he doesn't trade... Cabral, if he knows Grant Sear isn't coming back, and I know once a designated player, one isn't, and one was effective and one wasn't, but uh, he just left himself shorthanded. Another thing he did tell me, and he might have told you this too, is that the off season or the preseason is a little longer this year. It's seven weeks because you remember last year he was very adamant about everybody being in camp early, and then Costa, of course, came in late. This year, he doesn't seem as panicked about that. He doesn't seem like he wants everybody here early, and part of the reason is his first year he brought in fourteen new players. This year, so far, there's four, and two of them are the draft picks. So there isn't that turnover, although it's becoming a, a busy camp if Costa and Grant Sear don't come back. Yeah, it, there's there's more holes. He, it, Vanny was very clear in that he thought they only had a couple pieces really to move around and do stuff and that they wanted to keep everything else basically the same. Um, I would say that goes out the window a little bit with Grant Sear because I think he expected that piece to be back. So, um, And by the way, Grant Sear is another guy who maybe doesn't get enough credit as he should. He's a guy who definitely played better in that 10-game streak and was much more productive um, towards the end of the season. We don't know, and this is, I think this has to be stated emphatically, Kevin, is we have no idea whether or not the LA Galaxy playing at the end of the 2022 season was a fluke or whether this is how they're going to play. They're certainly confident enough that I could expect them to come back and play similar, similarly. Ugh. That's a, no too many too many letters in that one, uh, in a very similar way as they did to end the season, um, and so if that happens, I think you see a lot of continuity that gets carried over, um, and a lot of things happen. But there's nothing that says the LA Galaxy don't come out of this and struggle to start this season. Well, here's why: what was the difference at the end of last season? It, Ricky Pooch, right? Yep, and, and Gaston Bergman, both of those. It was those two players. Um, and we saw in the playoff game with LAFC where they really went after Ricky Pooch very physically. And Greg Vanny talked to me about that. He said, that's what we saw at the end of the season. Teams really didn't know how to handle him. He's a little guy. Um, and uh, so what they decided to do is get very physical with him and put their biggest defender on him and kind of rough him up. Uh, and and that seemed to be effective. It seemed to take R Ricky out of his game in the LAFC match. The other thing is Galaxy opponents now have had a couple months to look at film of, of Ricky Pooch. They were surprised by him. I don't think anyone thought that he would be as good as he did. People knew who he was and how he played, but I don't think anyone expected him to be as uh, um, effective as he was. Now they've had a chance to think about it, to, to sort of set their defense, decide how they're going to handle him. Greg Vanny said, yes, they got physical with him. He found ways to get around that, and there are ways to get around it. But he also told me it's now up to Ricky to make the adjustments. If teams adjust to him, he has to adjust to that adjustment. And that's where you determine good players from so-so players. So, you know, if we decide that Ricky really was the difference down the stretch, and I think there's reason to believe that, if he is not the same player he is at the beginning of the year, the Galaxy are going to struggle. Yeah, They're going to be back to where they were without him. Very well could. And so that's something to sort of pay attention to, right? Because the LA Galaxy will not have a chance really to change much. Although... There is something with the intra-league transfers, and we talked about it on Thursday, that if they implement that system, it's going to be a much more wide-open ability for the LA Galaxy to go out and get MLS talent and pay cash for it, right? So that's something to pay attention to as well. Um, the other thing that I would say is he talked about, we, we talked about him killing some rumors. One of the rumors he was asked about was Isco and whether or not Isco would possibly be coming to the LA Galaxy. He dodged that one. Uh, and he said there are many rumors out there. He goes, some of them are true, some of them aren't. He sp he chose to specifically single out the Pavone rumor to kill, right? And he killed that one. He didn't kill the Isco rumor. So I don't th I don't know what that says. Vanny said there are conversations going on right now and have been going on about the DP positions uh, position. There was also asking about what position on the field was he trying to target? Was it wingers or anything? He said it was about how the pieces fit, right? Did he say that to you too? It's about how the pieces fit and, and it well, may not be a winger. 
he wants he, he no he talked about how he wants the wingers to 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 penetrate the box more he needs to be more action inside the box more crosses into the box he didn't think the team was effective in the box uh, i guess he felt like the wingers spent too much time too far out um I, he did say that he sort of gave the indication that midfielders would be uh, uh, an area that he would look at. And now a midfielder could be a winger. You know? Right. And, and I know think that's what he's saying. I think he is saying that they want to get a winger, but he's still ob- obviously cognizant of how those pieces fit together. And, you know, sometimes you can get you, you can look at the players on the list and you can say, you know, getting this guy for Tam makes a lot of sense. So if we put him here that I don't need to use a DP there, I can use a DP over here, which is something maybe we didn't have or that we could bolster or look at. Um, so I think that's all he's saying. I still think the LA Galaxy are very well aware. And I think we've just highlighted it, that if the pieces go that we expect could go, especially with the Grand Sur going, the LA Galaxy are short on wingers. Probably a DP winger is a very good bet if you're going to bet on something like that. Um, and it certainly seems that way, or certainly a TAM player. Uh, Logan in the chat room asked whether or not um, there was, uh, that if uh, Grant Sear goes to uh, back to France, whether there would be a transfer fee. I think the rumor is uh, Le Havre, right, is is the is the club that he's going to go back to. I think they're at the top of the table in League 2, and they're expected to get promoted. So that's the club. So you're basically looking at, I think he came from a lower League 1 um, team and will go back basically to a League Two team that's probably going to get promoted up to League One um, this season. So it's very similar to the situation he was before. I would expect that there could be a transfer fee in that, um, and then that could help the LA Galaxy in, in some of the roster building if they if they do that. It's also ni- about nine hundred thousand dollars off of the salary cap as well. Dragonser makes a lot of money. Um, not only he he didn't always earn that money either, and that was obviously a big talking point last year. Um, through most of it, but closed the season really well. So um, I thought that was interesting. What did uh, what did Vanny tell you about the scouting department? Vanny told me about the scouting department. I, I have the notes right here. He is really high on Michael Stevens and thinks that Michael has uh, now gotten up to speed, that he's doing a great job. He's impressed everyone with his hard work and his intelligence. Um, Greg did seem to suggest that that he still needs uh, Greg kind of sitting on him and 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 helping him through some of the, the things. Let me see exactly what I, he said. Um, um, he also needs leadership and guidance from me in terms of player profiles and what positions and needs we're looking at, but he's extremely organized. Um, and, uh, he, you know, he thinks that the, the scouting department now is finally taking on the shape that he wanted when he came here a couple of years ago and sort of the dovetail in with the, uh, with Michael Stevens, who is a guy that, that Greg hired. And then Chris Klein, he said, um, and Chris Klein not being really involved with player development and, and, and you know, and, and the and the sporting director job. He said when he came here, he sat down with with Dan Beckerman, who, by the way, has been uh, a wall on this whole Klein thing. I haven't heard anything from him about any of this. But he said he sat down with Beckerman, uh, with Mr. Anschutz, uh, with Chris and with everybody else and said, this is the vision I have for this team. And I, I am going to be the sporting as I need to be the sporting director. I need to put this vision in place and I need everybody out of my way. Um, I don't think he said it quite that harshly, but right. I think that's what he meant. And so I think what he was trying to say is, look, Chris Klein is not going to be involved in any of this stuff anymore. We've heard that before. And he's in, and, you know, and, and Greg is entering his third season. So if he said that three years ago, why is he repeating it now? Shouldn't that already have happened? It feels that way. And like you said, we've been told some of these things before that Chris Klein is not going to be involved. Yeah. Z- Ziggy said that. Um, I don't think Kurt Anoff ever did, but Ziggy did. And and certainly with Dennis, that he was supposed to be GBS's guy. Um, and so Klein wasn't supposed to be involved in that. And by the way, Dan Beckerman, you remember this during the COVID when Dan Beckerman came up to us in the press box, you and I, and talked about how um, he hires people to make decisions and none of the decisions that are made are his. And it's just like, well, you, you're kind of the CEO. I mean, <laughs> none of this is on you. But if they win, you're going to take a ring, right? You're going to be there for the trophies presentation. It, it, it's it's one of it's it's an interesting one. I'll say that Vanny reiterated and says, you know, scouting import department is greater than it has ever been before in terms of his involvement with it. I don't think he's saying ever in the history of the LA Galaxy, but that very well could be a true statement as well because we know sort of how Bruce did things was different than than what they you know they then tried to implement afterwards, which was sort of this this talent referral system that they'd had through through agents and other things. Um, even Bruce, I believe, was part of some of that. But Bruce also knew everybody, so it wasn't hard for him to go and find talent all the time. He'd pick up the phone and call one of his friends. Next thing you know, you'd have a former U.S. men's national teamer headed to the uh, L.A. Galaxy. So uh, there was some of that. 
the one one sentence he sort of said to us was he, he was trying to explain it. I know he stumbled a little over his words, um, and I stumbled over questions. It was clearly preseason for both of us. Um, but he said, you know, the global expanse is bigger for us, like in terms of the amount of land that we can cover and the places on the globe we can cover we're scouting. It's bigger than it has ever been before as well. I think they actually feel, and certainly judging by what Vanny is saying, and I saw Michael Stevens at the uh, at, at the stadium as well. He was on the phone calling people, doing the doing his stuff, right, and and paying attention there. Um, I feel like Vanny thinks that they have a very good handle on where they want to go and how they want to do it. So you would hope, and Vanny has sort of talked about this and hinted at this. And Kevin, you talked about this before we started. All the French players that they brought in, they did a lot of that very blind, right? Because it was coming out of the co- oh, out of COVID um, and the lockdown, and you couldn't travel to go see people, and you couldn't do a lot of things. And they came out of that blindly, and they didn't make some great des- decisions, right? We talk about Ryan Revelison was okay, but wasn't the defensive midfielder that they wanted. We, they got Sega Koulibaly, who's now the only one who's who's technically left if Sam Grandsir goes, um, and then Kevin Cabral as well. So. You know, there's. I, I think that they're gonna. Be, they have a little more handle on a larger portion of the world now, and are able to cast a net. We always talk about how far they can cast a net in terms of how wide um, and how far. And Douglas Costa can't be the only DP winger that you want, right? DP, you know, midfielder that you want. There has to be other people. Um, and sometimes I think they've been criticized not casting the net wide enough whenever they go for head coaches, whether that was Kurt Analfo, um, or whether it's Chris Klein being the only person who apparently in, the, in this whole entire world that can, can be LA Galaxy president. I'm starting to believe that there, apparently nobody else can do it. Um, so there's, there's these things where a lot of times we've seen the LA Galaxy be very narrow. And I'm hoping with what Vanny is saying, and certainly from what he's talking about, he seems to indicate there's hope that they are turning a page and that they are seeing a lot more of the world now. Well, you know what I think is interesting is Vanny is, it comes from a academy background. Remember, he was hired in Toronto as an academy director. Uh, and I think he did some of that right right here with, Chief, was it Chivas he was with before? He may have, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was an academy guy, and that's sort of where – and he still has his hand in the academy here. He told me – I asked him what he did during the offseason. He said, I didn't have an offseason. I was at the academy every day. His, he said, my kids play there, so that's one reason I was there. But also I was you know, trying to get a, a handle on the academy. Let's go back to the worst season in LAFC his, – or uh, Galaxy history, which started this whole thing, which was 2017. Right. What were we told then? The academy was the future. It was going to be all academy. All these guys coming through were going to be great. It's going to be academy. We're finally going to get – our money's worth out of the academy. But now what do we find out? We find out that they're bringing in four French players. We find out they're scouting the world. We find out their resources are now going into scouting. Uh, what happened to the academy? I don't know of an academy player that's come up that's had any kind of an impact for a couple of seasons. They don't appear to look to the academy now to say, oh, we need a winger. Let's go down and get the best guy from Galaxy 2. No, the academy is, it seems to me, I don't hear anything about the academy anymore. It seems to me the academy is totally out of the player development picture and now if you're telling me that they can go around MLS and buy guys or trade for guys, the academy seems to me that's even become less a, a, of a tool I, that I they're going to use in team building. I think if there is an interleague transfer system, I think that would actually boost the LA Galaxy's academy in terms of they'd be able to sell players from their academy to other teams. Um, and one of the big deals on that is, and we've sort of seen it, is there are several positions for the LA Galaxy that an academy kid is never going to play. Right, like you, you, you. If you're a striker in the academy, or you're a striker down at MLS Next Pro, or however that goes, and Vanny talked about MLS Next Pro, you're never going to play, right? You're not going to play as a starter for the LA Galaxy. That goes to big, big team or big player, big international guys. I mean, you look at most of the offensive positions, and you're not going to find a guy. They just traded Cameron Dunbar, you know, who was a promising winger. Right in in the LA Galaxy sort of developmental system and doing all those things, and Cameron got traded for seventy five thousand dollars in in like contingency money. It wasn't even fully guaranteed. He has to play in order to get some of that stuff. Um, I, I believe Vanny when he says that we're not going to keep people who don't want to be here, and so perhaps that's part of it, which is Cameron Dunbar wanted out. Right, so you can look at these things. Academies have had some success in Major League Soccer, but it's been limited. You can look at Philadelphia, which is now the the sort of standard bearer for that and how good Dallas. they've been. And Dallas, but Dallas hasn't won crap. All right. Everybody loves to talk about Dallas and their all this stuff. Let's go, let's see all those MLS cups that Dallas has. What is one? Do they have one? Maybe two? I can't remember off the top of my head. A Dallas burn between the Dallas burn and, and Frisco Dallas out there, right? So that's you. 
in, in Major League Soccer, we have not seen a ton of success come from that. So I think the success could come for the LA Galaxy is getting those younger developmental players out of the LA Galaxy system and selling them to other teams. And whether that's abroad or whether that's in, that brings uh, some revenue in. But developing players is hard. It's super hard. You are going to miss more than you hit constantly. And you have to be in a market like Dallas, like Philadelphia, where you can play them at all positions. And the bottom line is the LA Galaxy are not in that. Um, maybe maybe that'll change someday. Uh, I don't think it will. Not, not in my but lifetime. If, if you're in Southern California, the number of good young players here is endless. Yeah. I know they, they should have signed Alyssa Thompson. I don't think they could have moved up in uh, in number one in the draft there. Uh, I think that would have been, would have been too hard for them. Um, one of the things Vanny did say about the Academy, two things, one on MLS next pro and one on the Academy itself. He says uh, that part of his sporting director thing has been that he has, he has taken even more of an interest in, in the Academy. He says he knows every player, he knows their face, he knows their name and he knows where they are along their development in the system, right? So he can go to any academy game. He knows the players. He knows all of them. And he knows exactly where they are along the path. And he says he's dedicated some time to that to make sure that he's you know present and he gets to see things. The Galaxy released a video of him talking to the U19s who were uh, going off, I think, to Arizona to play for a, a U19 championship. Uh, and so there was a little pep talk that he was giving them. Uh, the other thing he talked about was MLS Next Pro. And <laughs> Damian Calhoun asked about MLS Next Pro. He says, it seems like a step down from USL. Greg tried to say as nice things about MLS Next Pro as possible, but he said we weren't in it last year because I always think it takes a couple of years for leagues to sort of, you know, hash themselves out. He goes, now we're all going to be in it. Last year, it was more of a developmental league. Uh, and he goes, and he goes, I expect that maybe there's some of that now as well, that it's going to be more developmental than it is going to be about anything else. Right. And so. He said, that means that if we have first team players that aren't going to get time in the first team and we want to make sure they get time, that we might have to loan them out. So where are they going to loan them out, Kevin? To USL. This this is so, where they used to be. Where they used to be. This is so asinine in terms of Major League Soccer. Like, you know, Major League Soccer was getting worried because USL was getting bigger and a little more. USL was establishing itself as a real second division. That's what the big problem was. And MLS is like, you know, eventually this could be a problem. They could grow so big that they might even be a first division. Chill out, everybody. You could have chilled out a little bit, but instead they decided to take their ball and go home. We're seeing players transfer out of MLS Next Pro now and go to USL because they know USL is the better of those leagues. So that's going to be something we have to watch this year with MLS Next Pro is how the LA Galaxy use it, how competitive it is, all those things. And to me, it's a total step backwards. So if you thought the the academy system was maybe underutilized, wait until it's MLS Next Pro and see how underutilized it is. Well, and the other problem is, is you know, MLS, if they're trying to run away from the USL championship, they're just about getting ready to promote a USL championship team to MLS. San Diego, uh, a loyal, I, I believe, uh, are, will win the expansion race over Las Vegas, just too expensive to build a stadium in Las Vegas. By the way, do you have enough candy for everyone in the classroom? It, it's not candy; it's cough drops. I'm still, I'm still over here. I either have asthma or something. I used to have asthma a long time ago, so I wouldn't be surprised if it came back. Especially as I continue to eat those tacos um, and pupusas. I haven't had a good pupusa in a while. I guess the LA yeah, Galaxy need get, to get back. The season the season needs to start again. Are yeah. we going to have preseason pupusas? Will they come to the ex, to the preseason games? I will find out. It's worth finding out. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, maybe they could just send us some pupusas. No, that don't, no, because it won't be. You don't. It's like, what do you want? A pupusa that sat in a box for six hours? That's and no. Then you microwave it. Yeah. You're gonna get canceled if you continue this blasphemy. <laughs> You're gonna use a fork too. Jeez. No, I didn't say I was going to use a fork. I just, I'm just saying it just, it seems, it seems a little bit, um, I'm trying to think of sort of, I would like to point out, we did get to talk to Memo Rodriguez. Greg Vanny made it a point of saying that their midfield has gotten, that he thinks it's gotten better with Memo Rodriguez. Uh, Memo is a Houston favorite. I asked him a little bit. I said, you were a fan favorite there. So, you know, whenever you're coming here, are you expecting to start or what are you a role player? What is it? And he indicated that he knows he's a role player, that he will fit into any role that Greg sees him. But Greg was the first one to contact him. And that really held a lot of weight for Memo. He was like, all right, you were the first one. And I, you wanted me apparently more than anybody else. So I want to go with you. Apparently he had some other choices to go and he, he picked the LA galaxy. Vanny also talked about not getting Aaron long because it was talked about Aaron long. And he said, we had, we had conversations with Aaron long. Um, and ultimately with free agents, you either close the deal or you don't close the deal. And we didn't close the deal. Um, so it didn't happen. So 
whether or not the LA Galaxy were serious contenders for Aaron Long, we I don't know that we know, but obviously they were able to go out and get Chris Mavinga as soon as the Aaron Long deal fell through. So they were sort of, you know, sitting yeah, there. Yeah, but we, we talked about this last week, and the Galaxy never got beat on those kind of guys. If they wanted Aaron Long, if they even thought they wanted Aaron Long, they would have got Aaron Long back in the day. Right now, you know, again, we went through last last year. Rosnick, they didn't get him. They didn't get Acosta. They didn't get uh, Eli Sanchez. And now, you know, they get Mavinga and they don't get Aaron Long. I mean, that that is just not the Galaxy MO that we're all accustomed to. By the way, when you're talking about a winger, a name that just popped up to me, um, if they, especially if they have a designated player uh, spot that they can use and designated player money, Chucky Lozano. I understand that he is about to move out of Italy. He he could be a, would be a great winger here. He could play with Chicharito. Would be a guy that would be motivated to come to LA for a lot of personal reasons. Um, I, I I just kind of want to put a pin in that name because it, it they're, they're, that would be an interesting one for the Galaxy to try to go after. Just throwing it out there. You just you just, just pop, throwing just it out pop. there. Okay, I just wanted to. This isn't it's like either him or Messi. Which one you, would you rather have? Yeah, I, uh, clearly Chucky. I mean, uh, who who in their right mind would want Lionel Messi? That sounds crazy. Um, I did ask Greg Vanny about the cheating scandal. Uh, and it was my last question. Uh, I, I, I should. I'm gonna. We're gonna continue to follow this up. Nobody's not made any statements on this, by the way. I don't think this no. may be. This may be sort of the first thing. I mean, we all talked about the sanctions and what was going on. The problem is the LA Galaxy, at least in this sort of way, have set up Greg Vanny is very much separate from that, and he wasn't there whenever it happened. So he's very much like you can't sit there and grill him about it. But he's also the spokesperson for the team, so it's sort of like maybe he should have to answer for all the stuff if, if you know it's not fair to him that they put him in that position but it seems like he's going to be the only they, one right they, they already made a answer for klein being rehired in yep. a sense he's having to take the blow for that i mean it is unfair to put all this it's like every you know greg is now the mouthpiece he's the face of the team he has to answer all these questions and put the team together and be the sporting director and run the academy it seems to me like it's a little bit too much and you know the galaxy management thing on 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 both the suspensions uh, the penalties and and on Chris Klein is if they don't talk about it, it doesn't exist. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it, it, it never happened. We don't see it. it. Never happened. But it did happen, and it's right there. It's the eight hundred pound gorilla in the room, and until they address it, it's going to linger, and it's always going to be there. They, they're they're acting like my three year old son, right? Because he'll hide from me. He goes, "Daddy, I'm going to hide from you." And then he goes and he and he puts his hands up and he goes, "You can't see me," and so I'm not here, right? And it's like, no, that's not that's not. I see you. You're right there. That's not how it works. I mean, if Galaxy came out as an organization and said, we hired Chris Klein, we th there's a lot of different ways they could have done this. They could have said, Chris Klein is coming back. He got uh, last season, he signed contracts that got us record sponsorship revenue, record uh, ticket sale revenue. He did a good job. We're going to compartmentalize him. He will be removed from player development. He is over here. This is what he does. We think he's the best guy for that job. And then move on. And then when you say you never addressed it, yes, we did. We talked about it, and we're done talking about it. That's that's the reason. But they haven't done that yet. They, In a sense, they've kind of almost thrown Chris under the bus because they haven't said, we hired him. We think he's the best guy for the job. They said, like, we're not going to talk about it. it. What kind of vote of confidence? How would you like to be the president where your ownership won't even say you're the best guy for the job? They just kind of leave you twisting in the wind. Uh, final points, and then let's go talk about this supporters boycott because it's important. I want to get to it. Um, they asked, it was asked about the young DP and whether or not the LA galaxy were going to replace with Kevin Cabral being a young DP, whether they would replace him with another young DP. Greg says they're obviously open to all the options. They're going to work the different ways that they can do that. And they know there's different mechanisms to do, but that they are a big fan of the, he called them the youth fund options. And that includes the young DP and the U 22 slots, right? He goes, we think that's a great way to bolster and build depth within the entire team. And he goes, and you know, if, if something works out that, could be the way that they go again. So as you're thinking DP winger, perhaps it's a young DP winger again. And so it's going to be somebody who's under 23 years old in order to, uh, to fit that young DP uh, role again. Dangerous in terms of getting somebody who's proven. It's hard to have a proven 22-year-old um, or 23-year-old, but that very well could be the way that the LA Galaxy go in order to fill the DP. And you mentioned depth with the, the new Leagues Cup tournament. And with uh, U.S. Open Cup, if the Galaxy go deep in the playoffs and play deep in those other two tournaments, they're looking at about 50 games this year. Yeah, um, yeah Greg, which, Greg in, mentioned that. In like 42 or 43 weeks, so yeah. uh, an average of more than a game a week for the, uh, the entire season. That's a lot. You're going to need a lot of depth, especially when your number one striker is 34 years old. 
Yeah, I mean, and the fact is that he didn't get injured last year, and everybody kind of expected him to get injured, and he didn't, and so that almost feeds into this like anomaly that he wa- that was last year uh, for Chicharito. You sort of expected him to get injured, got injured the year before. He was injured the year before that, so like you sort of sit there and say, okay, you know, was is that the the Chicharito? Is he going to be able to stay healthy again? Um, because that's harder and harder as you get older and older and all that. Uh, the final thing, well, and, yeah, and Dayon keeps Dayon keeps putting banana peels in front of his locker. Yeah, that's <laughs> Dayon. <laughs> Dayon's just waiting for him. Uh, he's gonna Nancy Kerrigan him. Uh, he's gonna come out and, and take a baseball bat. That's gonna be it. Um, <laughs> Greg Vanny did talk about Jalen Neal. They were asked about the the center back depth. He said that Jalen Neal needs to step up. This is his time. We expect him to be a, you know, a, a more permanent part of the first team. And he's going to be have to back up uh, the, the Kossaris, the Koulibaly's and the Mavingas. And they expect Jalen Neal to fill that role. He was very definitive on this, which he hasn't always been um, whenever it comes to Jalen Neal. But he said Jalen will get tested in the preseason, which we will see. Um, and he will be expected to fill that role. So that's how they're going to fill out. I think the center backs are done. So and anybody thinking the Galaxy are going to go out and get another center back, it doesn't seem that that's the case and then we have the the draft pick from zimbabwe who uh oh, had oh, fl- for i mutatu right yes um yep. i understand he well i was told on thursday that within a week they would know his immigration status uh, whether he'll be able to come back so that means by the time you know this is monday night so they got three more days to figure it out yeah we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens maybe he'll show up at camp that'd be kind of cool that'd be fun to watch um so that's where we sit. Uh, there were some injury updates, nothing that's major. Uh, Johnny Perez returning to play. He's on his way back. Adam Saldana, who had the ankle injury and ankle surgery last year, just went under surgery again to remove all the stuff that they put in there, right? They put in some some braces and some stuff to hold his ankle together. And so now all that metal has come out of it. And Greg Bandy says he's feeling good. So expect those guys so back in the next couple of weeks. They were supposed to do that. They were supposed to take that stuff out. It's not like they screwed up. And had no, to no, go no. Back no. And they, yeah. they, they left their credit card in there, maybe a cell okay. phone. They had to go back in there and, and get it before they go. All right. Uh, on Friday, uh, January 13th, so it was a Friday the 13th announcement, uh, the members of the LA Galaxy supporters groups uh, banded together. That's the Galaxians, LA Riot Squad, Angel City Brigade, uh, the Galaxy Outlaws, and the Ghost Ultras Galaxies. Um, ultra, the Ghost Ultras Galaxy. Um, are in there. They all banded together and their leadership put out this statement. Given recent news regarding Chris Klein's contract extension, leadership of the Los Angeles Galaxy supporter groups have unanimous, unanimously agreed not to attend any matches until change in the front office is made. We encourage fans of the clubs at all level, whether members of organized support or otherwise, to join us in this action. This boycott does not come from animosity to the players and coaching staff, rather a frustration with continued front office practices that have placed off-field business in higher importance than, on f- the, than the on-field product. Um, our expectation is that the executive leadership for our club will work with transparency, with honesty, and with, with professionalism. We demand that all involved have pride in our colors as we do. We will no longer tolerate the types of dishonest and apathetic business practices which have embarrassingly come to characterize our front office and executive operations. We will not return to the stands until change is made at the highest level. We promise to collectively ensure that our club returns to operating with integrity and openness as it has in the past. We'll, we will accept nothing less. And that's Galaxians, LA Riot Squad, Angel City Brigade, Galaxy Outlaws, and Ghosts Ultras Galaxy. So that, <laughs> that was the statement that came out. This is starting, you know, and I had heard rumors of something coming. Um, I knew about it, I think, on either Friday morning or, or maybe it was even like late Thursday night whenever I first heard about it, it was probably Friday morning, whenever I think about it, um, that something was starting to, to sort of come. And I heard that there was going to be a boycott of the Rose Bowl game, but it sounds like that, that it's not just the Rose Bowl game. This is in in perpetuity, in perpetuity. That's, that's, yes, the, that's the word. You, in perpetuity. You're getting, you're getting, you, you spend too much time around me. I do. Now you can't pronounce things. I do. I, I could see the word in my head. I just couldn't figure out how to pronounce it. Um, but basically it's until it's forever until there's change within the front office. That's what they're demanding. Um, it, it's really interesting when you consider uh, Kevin, that this is in direct r- response basically to you announcing that Chris Klein got a contract extension because the LA galaxy haven't, um, and, and whether or not that the ostrich with the head in the sand is, is a correct analogy for the LA galaxy, but that's sort of how they've been playing it off. I can understand why somebody would, would go to this and, and make this statement. Really interesting, though. This is a chess match now. Um, 
I we we we're, I think we're going to talk a little bit about how maybe this plays out. It's a, it's a staring contest, and and first of all, let's just say that the Galaxy uh, management and AEG totally boxed this thing all up, just totally messed it up. Remember, this was a these supporter groups in August flew a plane around the stadium saying that they wanted Chris Klein and Jovan Karofsky fired, and it, it, I guess AEG thought, well, we made the playoffs and all that's gone now. And, but then they don't go to the supporters groups and say, look, Chris Klein is coming back. They don't talk to them. There used to, there used to be a dialogue. I remember there used to be a dialogue with supporters groups. But they're in a situation now, and you and I talked about this earlier today, if if AEG gives in, if they fire Chris Klein, right. then they've set a precedent where anytime, hey, the supporters groups want the team colors to be purple, um, and we're not coming to a game unless the team colors are purple. They, that's not going to happen. I understand right. that. I'm being facetious. But the idea is we've given in to them once. Um, they smell blood. They're going to come back whenever they want anything else. So AEG now is boxed in. They can't, they can't get rid of Chris Klein, Chris Klein. What they can do, and I think they will have a dialogue, and I think what they should do, the smart thing would be to say Chris Klein is – He's back because of this. This is why we like him. This is why we want to keep him. He won't be involved in player uh, situations. He won't be uh, involved in, in in putting the roster together. But, you know, are the supporters, the people, the Galaxy or any team are, are focused on? No. And and if you look at the Galaxy, if they sell, if they sell 20,000 seats at $20 a seat for all 17 home games, that comes to $6.8 million. Um, that's Chicharito's salary. It's less than their, the Galaxy are getting from Herbalife. So if you look at it, if the Galaxy fans are saying we're not coming to games anymore uh, because we don't like Chris Klein, but Herbalife says, hey, we really like Chris Klein. He's the only guy we're going to do business with. Herbalife's going to win because there's more money there. Yeah, TV, yeah. There's more money in TV than there is from the supporters. Yes, they want people in the stands and they want you to buy the jerseys and all those things. But I, I, I think they probably put a little more weight on the sponsors and certainly on TV than, than they do on what the supporters want. And, uh, you know, uh, the supporters are important as far as I'm concerned. But I think when the Galaxy look at it in a pecking order, I don't think the supporters are number one. And, and you can say that uh, you can see that in the way the supporters have been treated. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think I think you can certainly see that there has been a disregard and certainly a disconnect from the front office and the supporters here for a while. Um, it bubbled over in 2017. We've talked about that. The fact that Chris Klein got a contract extension that year when at some point there were supporters refusing to leave the stadium until somebody came out and talked to him. Right. Um, these are these are things that we've seen sort of come through all this time. I will say this. Getting money from a multi-level marketing agency that has been indicted and and you know and and charged and fined by for for targeting Latinos as your main sponsor is sort of like I don't think you can let them call the shots. Quite honestly, I don't think they should even be a sponsor of the LA Galaxy. They're talking about integrity here, and they're saying the Galaxy don't have any. And quite honestly, the Galaxy have been operating with some of the sponsors like Herbalife, like they don't have any integrity. So I get that. Um, I agree with you in some sense that AEG has boxed themselves into a corner. One, by not addressing this and coming out and saying something. And two, by basically saying, you're going to, we don't really care. You're going to deal with this anyway. I do think that there is power within support. And I think there's power within people to to make things happen. Uh, the it, I think it was the, the NAG guys, the News Across the Galaxy. I, I caught a little portion of something and they were talking about how there have been supporters uh, who have changed things. You look at Columbus, right? And Portland. And Portland, which, you know, is an ongoing civil war in so many ways where they're still going after Merritt Paulson. Merritt Paulson has had to sell the thorns, which was certainly a result of the pressure that was being put on him by some supporters and the results of some of these investigations. But that's going on at, at, at the Portland Timbers games as well. And it still goes on. It's but a big deal. A lot of that pressure on him came from the league level, NWSL especially, and it happened in with Louisville, it happened in Chicago. That's from the league level, and and the, the parallel to that is the Dodgers. Remember the fan boycott for Frank McCourt? Get rid of McCourt. We're not going to come to any more games. We're boycotting Dodger games, uh, and and Frank McCourt went nowhere. When did he go? When Bud Seeley came in and says, you have to sell the team. I think the Merritt Paulson thing is very much similar to that. The supporters say we want to get rid of him. Too bad. The league says you're gone, then you're out. And I, I don't think the league is going to come in and say fire Chris Klein. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it would be hard for the league to go to AEG and say, hey, you have to fire Chris Klein, right? That's harder to do. They could sit there and say, AEG, what are you doing? Because you're about to have the biggest game in MLS history in terms of the kickoff for this t for this Apple TV deal. But get $2.5 billion over 10 years. Huge amount of money, right? So 
<coughs> a lot is riding on this. You talked about how you the, the TV money is more. So where does the pressure come? The pressure comes from the fans not being in that stadium and then that game being broadcast worldwide in what is supposed to be the marquee kickoff game for Major League Soccer and Apple TV. Do you think Apple could possibly put some pressure on this if this continues in the preseason and everything else? It seems like that certainly could be the case because you talked about sponsors and TV holding a lot of the sway. Do you think Apple TV wants to have a game that is only one-sided, that only LAFC fans show up into the Rose Bowl? Maybe it would provide for a huge viewership number. Maybe they're saying the controversy is worth it, but it gives the league a bad black eye to start this relationship, and I think that's a huge thing. So if the fans are putting pressure and the supporters groups are putting pressure on right now to force that bad look... That could be a, su- a well, successful outcome. And and the supporters really can't do anything else. This, all they can do is take their money and go home. I mean, they, they don't, they're not, they don't have a TV network. They don't own the rights to the stadium. This is all they can really do. Here's what I think the next move is. I think that there is going to be a dialogue. I think there'll be a meeting with supporters groups Air, I have, and the galaxy. I, I can say that there is a meeting scheduled and um, I was, I was told this um, so I can, it, it was by a good source. Um, and so there is a meeting scheduled for tomorrow. I'm to- told the front office will be there, which includes Greg Vanny. Uh, I heard that, uh, that uh, Dan Beckerman, could also be at that meeting. I reach out to the LA Galaxy to confirm that I had I did not hear anything back, and that sort of seems par for the course for anything to do with Chris Klein and anything else that's going on. Um, so we have asked; um, they haven't got back to me. Maybe they're just super busy today. Sure, it's just uh, me. Yeah. It's just me. What? Who am I? Right? The whole deal. So, well, you're the guy who talks to the supporters, and and I think we know what they think about the supporters. I, I think what's going to happen at that meeting is the Galaxy are going to try to make. The point that Chris Klein is not going anywhere. Here's what he's going to be do. You know, it, again, what Greg Vanny told me, what the Galaxy kept telling me before the interview with Greg Vanny, ask Greg Vanny about how this front office is going to be set up. They definitely want to put space between Chris Klein and 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 the roster on the field. They want to say Chris Klein has nothing to do with that. And I think that's going to be AEG's argument in the meeting with supporters. Look, Chris Klein's coming back. All he's doing is 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 taking care of herbal life and running a few business deals. He has nothing to do with the players on the field. And I think the supporters are going to have to say, is that the compromise? Is that a compromise they're willing to make? Or, you know, do, do, do they really want to get rid of them? Because that again, puts AEG in a bad position where now all of a sudden, anything the supporters want going forward, they're going to get. And I, I AEG think has I, been a, AEG has done a, just let me say this. AEG has, has done a bad job in explaining their thinking, and then they've done a bad job in in not talking to about anybody about it. I do think that there is an argument that Chris Klein has done a good job on running the business side of the operations. You may not agree with that, but you can make that argument. They haven't even tried that. But but is I mean you know my argument would be could could is it just Chris Klein who did a good job there? Like it it wasn't it wasn't one other people on the team around him or two somebody else couldn't have also done that because they seem to be holding on to Chris Klein like he is like I said before like he's the only person who's possibly put in this position to be able to run the LA Galaxy nobody else could possibly do it it's impossible Kevin you couldn't even fathom being president of the LA Galaxy it's so hard and Chris Klein is the the guy who's gonna do it except for Todd Dunham. Maybe. I mean, there's lots of, I would imagine that there are more than probably 10 people in this whole world who could do it. Maybe even 20 or 30 people who could be LA Galaxy president and run it. And so I don't buy the argument that Chris Klein has done something that nobody else could have done. And when you link him with the fact that he, I I would say he had to have had some knowledge about what was going on with, uh, with the cheating scandal and everything that happened. And sometimes, let's say he didn't. Let's say he knew nothing about it. Dennis and this is all hypothetical Dennis and GBS they pulled the whole thing off and they kept it from him and they kept it out from underneath his nose isn't that also a failure the fact that you weren't able to figure out when people were trying to steal things or hide things from you and put your 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 business in a perilous shape to the point where you're being suspended well and here's some context for that again you know I, I was told ask Greg about how this front office is going to work going forward the idea of their separation Chris is not involved everything's good and then what happened with the suspension? Yeah. You know, the calls I got were like, you know, d- d- this was all Dennis. Dennis did it. You know, um, who's not here anymore? How convenient that the one guy who did this isn't here anymore. Really, again, the Galaxy trying to close ranks saying that Chris Klein had nothing to do with any of this. So you're right. I mean, if he has nothing to do with any of it, then why is he here? And if he had everything to do with it, then he violated the, the rules. Even on Friday, Greg Vanny told us how things were going to run. 
And so he went through that and he said, this is how it's going to go. And he goes, and obviously I'm going to talk to Chris about it whenever it comes to financial things. Excuse me? It's, it's, so, so, so there is input from Chris Klein. There always has been. And this is where Chris has always had the soccer side input. And it, I imagine it will continue because somebody holds the purse strings. Somebody says you have this much money. And sometimes you have to go to somebody and you have to ask for more money. And sometimes that person's like, I'm not giving you more money for this guy. But if you wanted to sign this guy, I'll give you the more money for that because it's more, more marketable to me. I can do different things. It's a business side thing that ties in with soccer operations. It's why he can't be, it's why he shouldn't be in the building right now because he's suspended from soccer operations and everything you do to support soccer is part of soccer operations, right? And so this, these are the things that come through. So what the, you know, I, I think there is an out for AEG. They have to tuck their tail between their legs in order to do it. And I don't think they're going to be willing to do that. So I don't see it. But you have talked about it many times is in terms of moving him up, promote him into AEG corporate land where he can be the head of the Olympics or the World Cup committees and all the things that are coming down. And he could do that away from what the LA Galaxy are doing. And he you, could be the opening act at Coachella. <laughs> he very well could be. Bad Bunny, then Chris Klein. Sounds great, right? Um, then Blackpink. Um, I'm just, I want to make everybody angry who, who was really upset about the Coachella lineup. Um, so, I mean, that there is a way there. You promote Chris Klein, you get him away from the LA Galaxy, and you let the Galaxy settle with what they have now, which is basically with Greg Vanny in charge, and you can bring in somebody who does it. And I imagine that Tom Braun, who is in there right now, could be a very good internal candidate of somebody who could move forward and sort of take over the business side of the LA Galaxy. So, Well, Kuntz is another candidate. Will Koontz is somebody, a soccer operations guy, guy who likes to get technical with things as well. So, yes, absolutely. Again, Kevin, it's like there's more than one person who's capable of being president of the LA Galaxy. I don't know why AEG chose to hitch their wagon to Chris Klein at a time where they could have broken free and seen and really won 100 million points with supporters and everybody else, right, to say, we're making changes. We understand Chris Klein. We thank him for his service all these years, but we went a different direction. Um, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring somebody else in who's going to continue that. Isn't 10 years a long time now, 11 seasons, to be a president in MLS? I mean, it's the longest in, in Galaxy history. He's the longest serving president in Galaxy history. It just seems like that's a long time. And and that has nothing to do with Chris Klein. That's just it, 10, uh, 10, 11 years seems to be a long time for a sports franchise. But that, I mean, it's a long time for a coach, right? Like it's all these things. You it, Gone are the days when a coach was spent 35 years at the same team and all this stuff. It doesn't happen because there's ups and downs and eventually something has to change because you can't always motivate the same guys over and over again. The same thing can happen in a in a business environment, especially whenever you're talking about large corporations, the, the LA Galaxy front office, all this stuff. Obviously, we're speculating on a lot of things. Um, well, and, and, and here's another thing to just buttress your point. I don't want you to get too far away from it is... The, the AEG, the, the deal with Herbalife is done for five years. Yes. The TV deal is done for 10 years. Mm -hmm. All those things are in place. Chris Klein could go on vacation for five years and nothing's going to change. In a sense, all the heavy lifting has been done. If you were going to make a change, and I'm not advocating Chris Klein be fired, but you talked about promote him or move him sideways or whatever. If you were going to make a change, wouldn't this be the time to do it when everything is pretty much locked in? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you get to the decision-making process that says, under your watch, your team was caught cheating. It cost us a million dollars. It cost us a million dollars in general allocation money, and you're suspended, and we want you to come back. There's too many things there that are black eyes. There's too many things. There's the, the contract extension that maybe he should have never gotten in 2017, right? That still lays there. There's the... there. I mean, you want to go all the way back, Kevin? We know that Dave Sarakin was run out of town basically whenever he was with Bruce Arena, right? And we know that there was certainly pressure from the top, and whether that was AEG or Chris Klein or however that was, but there was pressure from within the, within the front office to make the coach's salaries go down, right? To reduce the amount they were spending. And Dave Sarakin was making a lot of money because he was an associate head coach, right? And so Dave Sarakin had to leave. And then what eventually happens is Bruce Arena sort of is like, I'm done with this now too, right? And he goes off to try to save the U.S. men's national team. It doesn't happen. Um, they go after Chris Klein. or the, 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 It's not Chris Klein. They go after Curtin Alfo, right? They try to bring Curtin off. They bring in Pete Vianis, 
right? Eventually, what, a season and a half later, they have to fire Pete Viannis. Kurt Anolfo's gone. Siggy Schmidt is in there. Siggy Schmidt and Kurt Schmidt are trying to rebuild a scouting department. So we've been told, right, at, that never gets built out. Uh, you have the t- failure in 2017 where you win the, the wooden spoon. You have 2018 where everything languishes, but you get Zlatan Ibrahimovic, right? And 2019 was Zlatan. Uh, then 2020. Um, so 2019, you ended up making the playoffs because you had Christian Pavone. But then we realized that they cheated in order to keep Christian Pavone. So that's not a legitimate playoff appearance anymore. So these things, eventually somebody has to pay the piper. And it seems like everybody has paid. Kurt Anolfo, Siggy Schmidt, um, Dennis DeClosa, Garen Barish-Scoloto, right? There are all these guys. Everybody has played, paid when they have failed, except for Chris Klein. And that's well, just, it's just interesting that he's you, sort of been the architect of most of those moves, has he not? Well, and and don't forget the Orange County Soccer Club thing, which was, a, I think, a huge embarrassment to the team at the end of last season. Also, the performance on the field, which, you know, again, if they're trying to put a buffer around Chris Klein and saying he doesn't have anything to do with that, the team has lost more games uh, since 2017 than they have in any similar stretch in team history. I think they missed the playoffs twice in their first 20 plus years. And then since 2017, they've made the playoffs only twice, Um, you know, missed it uh, four times. So there's all that. There's the history of that. Um, the Dave Sarakin thing is so interesting because I do remember somebody in AEG, um, a high-ranking person in AEG, saying we had to get rid of, of Dave Sarakin because do you know how much money he was making? He was getting paid what most head coaches were getting paid. And you know what? They made the MLS Cup final th- three out of four – or one MLS Cup three out of four times right. with Dave Sarakin making that money. Do you think they'd go back to that in a heartbeat if someone said you're going to uh, win three of the next four MLS Cups, but you got to pay Dave Sarakin a quarter million dollars or whatever it was? I think they'd do that in a heartbeat. I still remember Chris Klein – at the start of 2017, after they got rid of all their DPs and they got rid of AJ De La Garza, and they got yep. rid of Landon and Robbie and, and Gerard, and they came in with a bunch of academy kids. And I said, you really like this team better than last year's with Robbie and Landon? And he goes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This team, Chris Klein says, this team is much stronger. I'd take this team over that one in a heartbeat. Well, that team won eight games. The, the Landon Donovan team made the playoffs. <laughs> oh. It's it's a it's an interesting conundrum now, and, and like you said, a staring contest, a chess match is going about to play out. Um, I think there's ways out. Um, I don't know. I don't know how supportive other fans and and not necessarily people who are in supporters groups and the members of supporters groups are going to be of the boycott itself. I mean, I know a lot of people love going to soccer games. I understand that 100%. Um, And so, you know, I've always said vote however you want. And so you get to vote with your presence, you vote with your wallet, vote with, how you know, writing a letter. You can vote all those different ways. It'll be interesting because you and I were were theorizing before that the LA Galaxy LAFC game at the Rose Bowl could end up being LAFC outnumbering LA Galaxy fans. I think that happens regard boycott or not. I I, I just think it's going to be two to one LAFC. Okay, and but now it's even more so. I mean, if if, if, if the boycott if, goes through, but there's some talk that LAFC uh, supporters, uh, the supporters union from LAFC, may join the boycott. I don't know how much stock I put in that, but I've heard some scuttlebutt about about the, the possibility of of them uh, sort of joining together. It would be really interesting if that happened. I think it would be great for soccer in Southern California, to be honest, if those two supporters uh, unions who are both so strong could somehow come together. I don't know it'll happen. I think there's a lot of uh, things. I don't think about it's the daring contest. Yeah. But what, if it did, when did when I don't even know. Cool? I don't know because I don't understand like the thing, you know, uh, ultimately it's about victory and winning. And like if when you, when the team across the hall is falling apart, don't you want to be there to watch it fall yeah, apart? That's why that's why it, it, it was hard for me to sort of I, I still think it would be cool. I don't understand why they would want to do that to come to the aid of their enemy. Um, but, you know, um, you know, as some people were saying, look, you know, the, the league, the league needs to is only as as strong as its weakest link. And if the galaxy is going down, don't let it sink because you guys are going to need us at some point. I don't know if that's true or not, but I think that's the thinking. Oh, man, I don't know. I can't tell you. I don't I don't think any of that is true. I wouldn't I wouldn't trust any of it. I, I refuse to, to trust most people about this stuff. Um, but yeah, it but, is. But I, I do think you're right. The other thing, there's eight to 10,000 season ticket holders, maybe more. I don't know. Um, the supporters groups are very vocal and they're a very, very important part of the fan base, but they are small in number. And so when you have these season ticket holders that said, I spent all my money on these season tickets, I agree with you, uh, supporters groups. I agree with what you're trying to accomplish, but I spent the money on the tickets. My, my 
my six-year-old really loves going to these games or other people that are, Hey, what do you want to do on Saturday? Let's go to a soccer match. And they don't know anything. They don't know Chris Klein from, right. from Kevin Klein, you know, they're going to go out to the game. And so, you know, it's as long as they're butts in the seats, I don't think the galaxy really cares who paid for the ticket. We, we did have a super chat. I didn't see who it was from. I, I, I cause it has disappeared and I went to go try uh-huh. and, and, and find out, um, all of the stuff. Hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to see, I just clicked another button. Um, live chat. No, that's not doing it. No, 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 no. I should okay. be in charge. I should be in charge of the super chats from now on. Yeah, that's not uh, $5 super chat from whoever it was. We appreciate you saying he, they were, he was complimenting you, Kevin, on getting an answer from the LA galaxy about Chris Klein, um, going through and, and finally finding that out. So, um, that's what it is. Um, yeah, I mean, that's sort of where it is. It, I, I don't know. I, I think watching what happens tomorrow, and, and like I was told that there was going to be a meeting tomorrow, um, and so I imagine we'll have it. We're going to have more coverage, or I'm going to have more coverage on Thursday. Uh, I do expect at least one member of a supporters group to join me on Thursday night. We can talk about some of the stuff, and so uh, we'll leave that where it's at, um, and we'll leave it up in the air, too. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there is, a, hey, you know, this is what we're offering but I also don't think AEG is going in there thinking they need to offer anything or the Galaxy think they need to offer anything. I think Greg Vanny being in it is interesting, uh, but he really doesn't have a horse in that race, does he? No, no, but but it's what we've been talking about. He's the guy coming out to put out all the fires. It's totally unfair to him, but it's just like they did with Zlatan. Remember when they were having the Victoria Block debate? All of a sudden, Zlatan had to come in and referee that. He had not, no, no dog in that fight either. Yeah. Uh, but Greg Vanny is the solution. They know that Greg Vanny... In a lot of ways, you know, um, it's done a great job. He was brought in to rescue this team. He's going to get a lot of leeway. And but now he has to rec- re- rescue AEG from this fiasco that it's created. It's it's just too much. Uh, it, I, I think Dan Beckerman is the guy to keep your eye on in this whole thing. He's the one that holds all the cards. He's the one that will determine what what happens and how it happens. All right, there you go. That's what we have. Uh, LA Galaxy uh, back in training. We talked a whole bunch about the uh, the media availability and all the stuff that we learned from that. Gave you a little bit of Galaxy news, talked a little bit about the boycott. So I think we've covered all that. We'll watch everything as it goes through uh, and have another live show back here on Thursday. Kevin, uh, anything else that you want to cover before we uh, we head on out? Tomorrow should be interesting. I wish I could cover that. Yeah, can, why don't they let us? Can they live stream that? Would that be cool? Like, like just that would be really interesting. I, I would it, it, in in terms of transparency. Somebody was pointing out that you know there used to be all of these um, like uh, like town halls and stuff like that. And I know yeah, I remember that back in 2017. I distinctly remember it in 2017 that they, that they were very much involved with the supporters and talked to the supporters. I don't know how much they listened to them, but they asked questions, which yeah. was. Uh, you know, better than the situation now. Well, and I think they did some of that virtually. They did some virtual ones during the the pandemic and stuff like that. So it's almost like, so, you know, if they do a town hall now, does, does Chris Klein show up? Because that he, he's really the one who, who needs to answer the questions about some of this stuff. We, we don't know. We don't know what has happened and, and who they're blaming. And I'd love to hear the spin. I mean, you know, it's like, it's one of those things you ask a question knowing that sometimes you're not going to get the full answer, but you want to hear what they're going to say in order to, in terms of trying to either give you what they consider the truth to be or something that they're spinning in order to be the truth. Uh, right. Those answers. I mean, if you see a guy back backpedaling, you know that you're onto something. If you see a guy say, I don't see what the problem is. Yeah. It, it, so that, even if they don't answer the question directly, what they do say gives you an indication of what's going on. Well, Vanny, I, I think I tried to get to this. Maybe we got sidetracked. But, you know, I asked Vanny about the cheating scandal and basically whether or not the image that, you know, that, that of the LA Galaxy has been tarnished. And he says, you know, first of all, I don't read anything. I don't have time to read things. So I don't know what the image of the LA Galaxy is right now. I, don't, I say call BS on that. But that's my opinion. Greg's entitled to his. I always appreciate talking to Greg. I don't want him to think I'm ungrateful for the for the discussion. The other parts he went there is he goes, you know, we need to make sure that we play within the rules, right? And and he goes, and so, but we also need to make sure that we're pressing, you know, all, constantly pushing the edge, constantly challenging those rules. I mean, the LA Galaxy are the reason that there are DPs. You know, it's the teams like Atlanta who are spending and transferring who are constantly trying to challenge the things. And so I get that because that's a real rah-rah speech and that's certainly the positive spin of it. But you can't tell me that the LA Galaxy thought that what they were doing was within the rules because there were contracts and payments outside of the contract that they gave to Major League Soccer. They knew they were breaking. This isn't about bending the rules. This isn't about making Omar Gonzalez a designated player. This isn't about David Beckham becoming the first designated player. They did that with the league's permission. 
So did they go to the league and say, hey, we'd like to pay Christian Pavone and then we'd like to pay him under the table this other you know money? Because that's what certainly MLS has indicated happened. Right? That wasn't the thing. So I like that 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 Greg was trying to make it a positive thing and said we should play within the rules and we're making sure that we always are right on that edge. And those I agree with. That's how you should operate. You should operate on that edge. But there's certain things you push and certain things you don't push because you know they're just illegal. Well, and, and it, there used to be an old saying in NASCAR, you know, when you talk about the, the aerodynamics of the car, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. Um, and it, not, not that you really need to cheat, but the idea is if you're not pushing it, you're not trying. Let's go back just a second. When Pavone was signed, the team had just come off that horrible 2017 season, right? And 2018, they didn't make the playoffs. And now they have a chance to get Pavone, the guy that GPS wanted, the guy that he said is going to turn things around, the player that's going to make it work. They were in a tight race to try to make the playoffs. There was a lot of pressure on the front office. I'm you know, I'm not suggesting one way or the other that they knowingly cheated. All I'm saying is there was a lot of pressure on them. And you can certainly see that if someone said, what can I get away with this? That they might have tried it. Right. I, I, you know, I, it, that would be human nature, as you said. If you're if you're not pressing the envelope, you're not trying. Did they step over the line? You could see where they were. There, there might have been an impetus to do that. With, and then step back. And your question to Greg was a great question about does this hurt the image of the team? Um, the Galaxy have won more MLS cups than any other team. DC United, I think, has or uh, yeah, DC has the same amount, but the Galaxy five, right? Right. Uh, they have more DC wins, more. Reg- for, okay, so yeah, so Galaxy have more, most titles. They have more regular season wins. They are the class uh, of the league. They're the ones that brought designated players. And all of these things, up until 2017, they were the New York Yankees and the New England Patriots wow. and the Lakers and Celtic all combined. That's the hold they had over MLS. Is that still the way you think people think of the franchise? No. I mean, they missed out on, we just talked about them missing out on free agents over the last couple of years because nobody wants to be associated with them. I mean, that's, and, kind of my, that's kind of my point. They need to put that back together again. And this is not helping. And, and, Greg, and Greg knows that. Like, that's the whole thing is you should have told me that. Just tell me, yeah, we have to repair the image. We have to do a better job. If we win, we can fix. Quite honestly, he could have said, if when we win and when we win this season, we're going to fix all that winning fixes these things. We have to show that we are a team that's ready and willing to compete for MLS cups. And when we do that, we will fix all of these problems that we've caused and created for ourselves over the years. Okay. I just solved the problems. Oh, and, and we've promoted Chris Klein up to AEG management and he's with AEG now. And the LA galaxy are now starting a worldwide hunt for a president. And it's Todd Donovan. Congratulations. everybody. <laughs> um, you know, so, I mean, there, there's, there's things that there's just the ways that these things have fallen through. And I, I, I always think Greg tries to be forthcoming with us. I don't think he's ever a hundred percent truthful. I don't think you can be as a coach. He can't tell us some of the things that he's about to do. Some of the players he's about to talk to. So he couldn't tell us during last season that Kevin Cabral was horrible and he knew it. I mean, like I still, I told everybody, I told everybody he knew Kevin Cabral wasn't that guy, but he knew in what position he was trying to make him successful. Um, and it, he needed him to be successful in that moment. Sam Grandsir was another example of that. Grandsir got better at the end of the year. That's why losing him now would be a, would be a hit. He sees things. I think there's hope in that for LA Galaxy fans. And I think that this boycott has called out that it's not about the coaching staff. It's not about the players. It's about the front office. Um, and I think there's a reason they carved that out. I think Greg Vanny is up, has been upholding his end of the deal so far. Not saying it was a perfect season last year. It wasn't. But the way they finished out, the way they were in the playoffs, the way that I thought they were one of the few teams who could have beaten LAFC um, last year all leads to to something. Greg... Uh, how long- how long yeah. does he put up with this clown show? Hey, Greg, you're doing a great job. You got us into the playoffs. You're now running the academy, and you're now the sporting director. And, oh, would you come to all of these meetings with supporters to try to clean up our mess for us, please? Because we really don't know how to do that. How long is he going to put up with that? And, by the way, I do think Tom Braun might be the guy that's being groomed to take over at some point. This w- Next week, after they promote Chris Klein, I'm telling you, that's the, that's, that's, I, that's the out. That's the only out I see. The, you were 100% right. AEG cannot fire Chris Klein now. That's, that's out. And, by the way, I don't think that would have changed anything. Like it was like, oh well, if they wouldn't have boycotted, maybe they would have fired him. No, that wasn't going to happen either. They were already made up their mind, so they would. They were like, this is not going to be a problem. The fans won't care. It's fine. We just don't want to tell them. So, hey, Kevin, can you tell them? Uh, do you work for AEG secretly, Kevin? I have a feeling you do. I, I do not. I do okay. not. I, I'm just checking. Somebody said that. Try- 
Somebody, somebody said that. Somebody, somebody said that. Somebody oh. was like, somebody's like, Kevin's just an AEG mouthpiece or something like that. And I'm like, I'm like, they like the guy made a the guy got you the answers you were looking for. Um, they yeah. haven't read my stuff over the years. Oh man, it was, it was remember there was a long time when Chris Klein wasn't talking to me. Yeah, I know. I get I get silent treatment. There's people who don't talk to me too. It's okay. Uh, Alex uh, gave us a five dollars super chat. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, Alexander gave us a super chat. They're different people. Um, Alexander gave us a ch- super chat for two dollars. Says this is beyond frustrating. Love the show though. Thank you. We appreciate that, uh, Alexander. Wish we had more happy news to talk about. But I mean, it's only eleven you might days. Have Thursday. You might have something on Thursday. <laughs> I, I don't think it's gonna be that fast. <laughs> Can you imagine AG walks in and goes, "You know what? You're right. We we he's gone." That's yeah. it. It's like, are, are we done here? with his head on a <laughs> <Right>. pike? <laughs> like, 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 are we done here? Is it? Are is like? Can you imagine that? So, so we're good. Do we need to? I was, I was, I only scheduled this meeting for five minutes. I figured that would be it. You know, <laughs> you guys want to go for lunch or something? That's not what's going to happen. So now it's about how you have to give both the supporters now a way to save face and for AEG to save face. Those are the only way this comes about. You know, as a as a real resolution. You want to talk about negotiating skills and all the things that go through it. These are the types of situations that, you know, real negotiators figure out the win win for both of them, or quite honestly, the kind of lose kind of lose for both as well, right? Like you give, we give, it's not a win for us. It's not a win for you, but it's not a loss. Like it's not a huge loss for either of us. And we can walk away from this and everybody's good. Um, I, these supporters groups, and I think the, the LA galaxy, the hardcore LA galaxy fans, which I'm not saying are, are gigantic in number, um, but I think there's a lot of walk-ups that fill the stadium all the time, but the hardcore LA galaxy fans, they're a passionate bunch. They're, they're going to make things happen. Something's going to happen. Um, I, I think AEG comes in and the start starting position is he's not involved with soccer. He's still the president, but he's not involved in soccer. Just Greg Vanny, tell him you're going to take care of everything. Yeah. And I think that's how it starts out. And, and, and the supporters are going to have an answer for that. It's like, okay, if you're, if you promise us and, 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 and we're no. sure about that. Nope, because they're going to quote Greg Vanny from Friday's press conference where he says that he's good, that Chris is going to be involved in that next. All right. I mean, like, that's what I'm saying. Do not. Um, and I'm not saying this to you, but I think that the L.A. Galaxy should be reminded. I think AEG should be reminded. Do not discount the intelligence of the supporters. There are a bunch of smart people who, who have real jobs, who go about and do real things for all day that deal with this kind of stuff all the time. There are some smart people involved in a lot of this. And also, don't AEG, don't get yourself in the position of belittling them because they care about the club more than you probably do. I, absolutely, 100%. It's such a, if you're a neutral and you find this stuff interesting or entertaining, this is like, this is the World Series or or the uh, or the World Cup, let's say, for, for this type of thing, just to see how these things match up. So anyway, hopefully we'll have some more for you on Thursday uh, and we can carry it. But there is a meeting scheduled for tomorrow on Tuesday um, and we'll sort of see what comes about. about where where that. is that meeting going to be? Do you know? I think it's probably at the LA Galaxy. I think it's at Dignity Health Sports Park. Is, do they get food? Are there drinks? Are there snacks? Do they order sandwiches? We, we got sandwiches on, on okay. Friday. Yeah. There, and the good news is that uh, so many people, there were about 10 of us there, and maybe they were expecting 20 people to show up. So I got two sandwiches. It was great. I got I got lunch while I was there, and then I got lunch for in the car whenever I was driving home because, you know, I got to feed this belly all the time. So the the two sandwiches. Well, I, so let's find out. Let's find out what they offer at the meeting, and find out is the media more important than the supporters? Because you get two <laughs> sandwiches, yeah. the supporters get none, then we know. We know. Yeah, maybe maybe they're gonna get like Chick Fil A or something. No, it wouldn't be Chick Fil A. Canes, Canes, chicken fingers, and that means they like the supporters more oh, than they like the yeah. reporters. We we get those sandwiches from uh, Jonathan Bornstein's parents' place, uh, which is I, I love the sandwiches. They're actually really good. So I'm I'm a big fan of the of the box lunches we get. So outstanding. All right, we good? We're good. I don't want to talk we, anymore. We were good a long time ago. Yeah, I know. Uh, we were never good. That was that we've never been good, Kevin. All right. If you're looking for Mr. Kevin Baxter on Twitter, it's at kbaxter11. Uh, go ahead and follow him there. You can head, follow him at latimes.com. And uh, if he has any updates, he will, of course, let you know either here on the show or out there on Twitter. And we'll, uh, we'll keep things rolling. If you are looking for me on Twitter at Jay Guessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N, and of course at Galaxy Podcast, please head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com where you can find all of our wonderful content right there for you. We hope you enjoy it. Uh, please, uh, we'll see you back here on Thursday. All right, that does it. LA Galaxy closing in on the preseason for Mr. Kevin, the Panda Baxter. I'm Josh Pato Guessman. You've been listening. You've been watching to Corner of the Galaxy from the box on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Have a great one, everybody.
You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.